As cases of coronavirus surge in the U.S., we're looking around the world for data that could help us treat this deadly virus. President Trump started a ripple effect when he titled the potential benefits of the drug hydroxychloroquine, a common anti-malaria drug, as a treatment for coronavirus. Hydroxychloroquine. And it's shown very encouraging, very, very encouraging early results. But top health officials immediately downplayed its effectiveness. There has been some promise with hydroxychloroquine, this potential therapy for people who are infected with coronavirus. Is there any evidence to suggest that, as with malaria, it might be used as a prophylaxis yeah. against COVID-19? No. The, the answer is, is no. And, and the, the evidence that you're talking about, John, is anecdotal evidence. But it's this graph part of an early release of a small clinical trial, just 36 participants, that has doctors everywhere taking note. In the pilot trial conducted in France, the combination of hydroxychloroquine and the antibiotic azithromycin, or z reduced the viral load in 100% of patients in six days, compared to just 12% in patients treated with the conventional therapy, which is currently the standard of care in America. You know, day by day, we, we, we saw the result comparing uh, 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 hydroxychloroquine and hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin, and very rapidly we saw that there was a difference. I spoke exclusively to Dr. Didier Raoult, one of the top infectious disease specialists in the world, who led the clinical trial. Was there a, a clinical outcome difference in the patients? I, the paper reported the reduction in viral load, as you highlight, but you stopped short of, of offering the clinical outcomes because it was so early. But were there differences in pneumonia and hospitalization rates and recovery times? We, 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 uh, we specifically are looking on this. So I expect next week we get a paper that reports the clinical effects. Are you optimistic that okay. you show a clinical very, benefit? Oh, very, very optimistic. Some say, theoretically, azithromycin could work in conjunction with hydroxychloroquine because it has an anti-inflammatory effect on the lungs. In your paper, you point out that uh, the the duration until cessation of virus was five to six days on average. Uh, in China, it was 20 days. So you've cr offered a combination therapy that reduces the period of infection to one third of what it was originally. As a infectious disease specialist, how much of an impact does that make in the, in the row do you predict? How, how much less infectious would this be in practice? It makes sense to say if people are carrying virus uh, one third of the time, uh, the, the, the risk of infection around them would be much lower. And specifically, if they are still sick, probably even the, the viral load will increase if you don't treat them. It will increase to level. But sometimes, you know, the, the, the level of contamination is really huge. It's billions of particles. So this one that may be, you know, what super spreaders, uh, of course, they are even more important to treat because then they're going to spread that anymore. Why do you think the study wasn't already done when the Chinese were struggling in Wuhan? I'm, I'm curious why some other researchers that didn't at least try the hydroxychloroquine. Well, in, in fact, as you may know, in China, they get something like 20 trials currently ongoing with one arm or both with uh, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. So they, they have, I don't know, uh, how many thousands of people they are, are currently been receiving uh, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. But uh, we, we get the preliminary information on this officially on a very small paper saying we've treated 100 people and they are better radiologically and clinically. And then apparently we know from the Chinese that if, if you get before uh, respiratory distress diagnosed and if you can, when there is no virus, there is no more evolution. So if you kill the virus, of course, uh, the evolution is, is, is stopped. So the question is, do we put the treatment to work on patients now or delay? Professor Al did not mince words. Do we need to do a double-blind randomized trial with a placebo arm, uh, which has been the argument but for some, or are we comfortable moving ahead with the, mag with the significant difference you've already shown? I think if you want to do an experimental data, you cannot do that against placebo. You should do that against the treatment that we've been describing and try to see if there is something better. I don't think it's ethical. I mean, it's, you, you know, the... 
the methodology for acute uh, 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 infectious disease have nothing to do with you know methodologists. Uh, and there is uh, two kind of people that bother me in general. That's uh, uh, the, the the modelist and the methodologist. This is not medicine. This is mathematic or what else. It's not medicine. There are real concerns for the availability of the drugs, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. Experts and government officials are looking at ways to increase the supply. Now there are at least six other clinical trials for hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin being launched around the world. If you personally had coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, would you treat yourself with this combination therapy? Of course. Of course, I've never did. Uh, to my patients, some 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 things that I will have done for myself, never. I, I'm, and I'm teaching that since you're, I'm an old professor. I'm teaching that to all my students. Each patient, you should treat that if it was your mother or your son or your sister, because this is what is a doctor.